In fact, I might even cut the name out of here. I triple clicked. I hit Command X. I don't know if you can see that, but let me zoom in just a little bit. When you triple click, it makes things go a lot easier than clicking and dragging. One, two, three, and you've got the whole line. One, two, three. If you click four times, it grabs the whole paragraph. Let me get into a paragraph. Oops, excuse me. By the way, I'm hitting the space bar to move this over. Um, one, two, three gives you a line. One, two gives you a word. One, just put your cursor in there. One, two, three, four grabs an entire paragraph. And one, two, three, four, five grabs the entire story, even the type that you don't see that may be outside the bounding box. So it's much quicker for people to triple click or double click or triple click or even four clicks for the paragraph than it is to click and drag. When you click and drag, you oftentimes miss what's called the invisible or non-printing character. It's right here. Now, when you go to type, show hidden characters, this is at the very bottom, type, show hidden characters, you will see these hidden characters. Okay, these hidden characters are actually very important. And we talked about these in Microsoft Word. And I thought I had deleted all of them, but I need to go through and delete them here. Uh, not all of all. you don't want to delete all your hidden characters, just your um, hard returns. These are these backwards P's. Those extra returns need to go. Now I thought I had also created paragraph styles, so we'll find out what's going on with that, if it's uh, if it kept them or not. Okay, I also want to get rid of my double tabs. Now the tab stops look different than they do in, I'm going to get rid of my bullet points too, they look different than they do in um, Microsoft Word. There's just one arrow and here there's a double arrow. When I'm cleaning up anything that has spacebar, spacebar, the dot 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 was spacebar stuff. You don't want to have that. And I need to get rid of all of these extra extra returns and extra bits of information I don't need. Okay, so those are hidden characters. Um, you can't really get rid of this, well I suppose you can, if I hit delete it'll go to the next line. So if you see that pound sign, uh, you can um, hit delete key and now it's at the end. That means it's as, it, this is the end of the type. That's that symbol, what that symbol means. Okay, so I've cleaned up the text. I have a text box that is ready to, um, uh, I'm ready to take the name out of and play with, and I'll deal with color and stuff a, a little bit later. I like the, you know, the whole idea of the inspiration piece was to actually uh, use a similar color palette, um, things like that, so I will deal with color later. Uh, what I do want to do is I do want to go ahead and triple click on the Jane Doe, the name, Make sure you grab your invisible. I'm going to cut it, which is Command X or Control X. I'm going to draw a separate text box and I'm going to paste it and get rid of the extra return. There we go. Now I'm going to adjust the box so that it's about the same size as the type. You don't want your bounding boxes to be uh, too much bigger than your type. Now, I have a great tip, and this will save you tons of time in InDesign. Um, I think this works in Illustrator to some respects as well. When you want to increase the size of either text or image, I suppose you could go over here and use the tr free transform tool and then start clicking and dragging. The only problem is, is that you when you do something like that, the text or the imagery is stretched out of proportion. And this is unacceptable in the field. Um, people have spent many years studying typography and design and practicing the art of type and design, and it just drives them batty to see stretch type like this. Okay? That is not acceptable. There are fonts that have extended and condensed. This is, would be condensed, and this is extended when it's squished uh, from horizontally. There are typefaces that um, you can they have that in there. Now, how do you get rid of that once you uh, realize you made that mistake? Well, if you tr triple click again on your line of type, up here where it says horizontal 
or vertical scale, these numbers should be the same, preferably 100%. So I typed in 100%, and you can see that my bounding box is now just a little too small to contain that information. So I have to make my bounding box bigger. There we go. Now, instead of using the free transform tool, I rarely use that tool in InDesign, actually. I'm going to hold down Shift. This is with the, uh, I'm going to be using the selection tool. I'm going to hold down Shift and Command. Now on a PC, this would be Shift and Control. So Shift, Command, I click and I drag, and you can see, and I'll click and hold and wait, you can see that this text, see my mouse is moving over, it's not stretching it out of proportion. It keeps the text in proportion. So this is Shift, Command, click and drag on a Mac, or Shift, Control, click and drag on a PC. Okay? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to actually fit this into, visually, into the space that's in these three columns. Now let me turn off the Layers panel for just a second. One, two, three columns. We don't count this outside gutter as part of the first column. Okay? Don't cross over gutters like that. It's okay crossing over when you're going across all three, but when you get to the end, the end is actually does not include the gutter. Okay, so this is um, this is directly inspired from um, this piece that I have here. So here on this piece, this type that displays the um, the product is bigger than the type below it. So we're talking. Um, this is a somebody's exercising visual hierarchy here. Now, in a resume, your name should have visual hierarchy. So, in this case, I have made the Jane Doe bigger. Now, in addition to um, this, you want to make sure that you uh, kern your type. So, just start with optical and then move from there. Now, I haven't decided what typeface I'm using yet, so this um, I'm not going to sit there and spend a lot of time kerning this just yet. Now, the address information um, right now it's two lines of information with phone numbers and um, I'm thinking let me zoom out of this command minus or control minus I'm thinking that this would look good across th these three columns but just short of, of of the Jane Doe stuff now just like this has a step I want to have my type also kind of have that step. So let me zoom back in. Now, without knowing what type size I'm using, this could be a little difficult to, to manage. Now, also sometimes when I'm, by the way, I'm trying to click on this box and you see that Jane Doe keeps getting selected. Um, what you can do to get to the next layer is, or the next, it's not really a layer, the next level below it, if you hold down Command and click or Control and click on a PC, that, that box will come up. Okay, so I might actually bring it to the front. Object, arrange, bring to front, excuse me, bring to front. Um, shift, command, ending bracket. It's a keyboard shortcut. Now I'm going to um, put returns in wherever I see it f it's necessary. I might go ahead and stack this type as well for the address, or excuse me, email address and telephone number. Now, let's see how this is coming along. And I'll hit Command-0, and we'll see. Now, as long as you're not in a text box, if you hit W, you can get a print preview of what things look like. Some people actually like working in this preview. The only problem is they're not aligning their things to the grid. And uh, it's okay to break the grid a little bit, but you really do need the grid. Okay, now I do um, feel that this feels a little weird, so I am going to take this type, and I'm going to choose to align it to the right. Now this is up here in the design we have our character formatting controls and what we do have up here the align right button. There we go. And this is aligning to the grid. The Jane Doe words are not so I'm going to fix that. And again I haven't played with this typographically so I don't know uh, yet what I'm going to be doing with that. Okay. Now I'm going to hit Command-0, 
and we can see that this is aligning to the grid, Jane Doe is aligning to the grid, and that feels a little bit better than what we had before. Okay, and let me see, we're missing something here. I, think there, I thought there was some extra type. There it is. Make sure that's also, whoops, flush right. And I'm not sure what I did there, so I'm going to hit Command-Z, and we're going to go flush right. Okay. Now hit Command-0, and we can see, again, that um, we're zoomed out. All right. Now let me turn back on my inspiration crop. And I think I'm going to stop this video now because um, of the time. And I'm going to continue this InDesign demonstration on another video. So get your things to the point where you have your background inspiration crop in them, your InDesign file. Lock that layer, get it to size, get your text in here, and you know clean up any extra returns or hidden characters that are unnecessary, and save the document. File, save as, and I'm going to call this layout, resume layout one. And you always want to number your stuff, especially with a discussion board. Uh, people don't understand what in the world you're talking about. Uh, it's just you, you want to be able to have people communicate with you which which layouts they like the best. Okay, so I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it um, layout layouts create and hit save. So it just saved this as resume layout one, INDD stands for InDesign, and it saved it to that folder. Okay, we're going to move on to the next step in steps in the next video. Thanks for watching.